Namaste. These conversations, you know, we, we have these conversations very frequently sitting at his office and every now and then I kick myself for not having recorded them. So we started this little trend of having uh, these conversations be recorded. Uh, you may agree, not agree, you know, disagree, you may like some of these ideas, maybe uh, uh, uncomfortable, little revolting, not fit into our scriptural ideas sometimes but at the same time these are profound at least for me and I am absolutely sure for a, for quite a few people out there um, this is the way personally for me this is the way I learn by interaction by talking asking questions arguing this has been our tradition and so um, they are elevating I learn and argue and hopefully Anand also gathers you know something valuable in this process and I'm hopeful and almost sure that a lot of you would found these useful one of the criticism uh, we got or at least I got in the conversation in the first conversation was around the seemingly benevolent ideas of Islam and so we'll explore that looking forward to your comments please leave your comments in the in the uh, comment section in the YouTube video once this goes live below let us give your feedback perhaps even your questions that I may take forward in these conversations with Anand and not only Anand but with perhaps perhaps with other people um, that I hope to interact in a series of these videos an understanding of the Hindu civilization or culture or religious spiritual traditions. Thank you. It's the whole principle of kafirhood. It's so deeply entrenched and kafirhood is not only about ki you are matlab, you're non-believer. Non-believer is something else. I mean, you can say whatever you about me, I can think whatever about you. But this is in it's it's a pejorative term. It's looked down upon, it's a hateful term. It is nothing but hate speech. That day I was listening to Bill somebody uh, who's a researcher on Islam. He says 51% of the Quran is about is dealing with kafirhood only. And 14% of all of the Quranic scripture, which is called the Shariat, only 14% is Quran. Hadith and everything is about the life of Muhammad, including emulating all the things he did, whether it was horrible things like Banu Kureza, where he killed 900 soldiers overnight, took sex slaves, all of this business. I mean, everything is wiped. Everything is, yeah, I don't know. This is all just, I don't know how. You one does not draw patterns if it's an aberration, but if there is a pattern to a human being or to an entire community's behavior, then you I mean it's 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 dishonest in my opinion to say that no I'm going to argue the other way. Now let me ask the question. Yeah, the purpose of looking at or wanting to find patterns in other people's behavior. Could be driven, I mean, there could be various reasons why one might want to do it. No, firstly, let me clarify, sorry to interrupt you. I'm not trying to draw a pattern because of some reason of my, I mean, I, I don't care what this is. I'm not doing it out of academic interest. I'm doing it because it affects me. How does it affect me? Now, that's the question that yes, I wanted. It affects me because it's their worldview of looking at me. One says, out and out of good spirit. One, Christianity says they want to convert me because otherwise I will end up in hell. I am a non-believer and according to both whatever Old Testament, New Testament, whichever place I am going to go to hell. So poor guys are trying to convert me so that they can get to heaven and I can get to heaven. All good spirit is how I understand it. And the other guys are basically saying that, I mean, seven kuch aisa sunai. Saat pidiya piche or age. Your sins are wiped out according to the shariat, according to Allah's diktat. If you convert kafir, a polytheist, and bring them to Islam, specifically, supposedly women. And this is the root cause of all um, love jihad, where you are basically deceiving people. And whether it is in by, you know, mocking their whole idea of Devi Devatas, 
Okay. I mean, why do you care whether I believe in an elephant god or a monkey god? How is this your problem? Why should you come and keep breaking my murtis? Because you, because Muhammad broke the Kaaba temple. It's just going on so and an, on an, unstopped. An interesting project might actually, given what you are describing, an interesting project might be actually to see when did the whole idea, what is the genesis of the whole idea that I, that there is a need to convert people to your view. Let me finish what I am saying. And the reason why I say that is, I can safely say that I have not read the Quran. So I actually don't know what is in the Quran. And very often I am aware that people peddle, just like they peddle about Hindus, they peddle stories of things that might be there in the Quran. Or not. So as we accept some of these narratives, is to want to verify whether there actually is stuff like that or is it differently or is it differently interpreted now each sentence every sentence is capable of being inter many very often is capable of being interpreted in many ways let me not having read the quran but generally having explored so why don't you read some of it so generally having explored uh, i have no interest in it <laughs> but, but, but i get it but then but then without uh, investigating and truly going even on okay why don't you just simply go to quran.com and I'll read out here right now two two verses this is Quran chapter 3 verse 151 we shall cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve because they ascribe unto Allah partners for which no warrant has been revealed their habitation is the fire and hapless the abode of wrongdoers. Basically what is being said is the following. That believe only and only in Allah and do not equate other forms, other ideas of God, okay, which are ilaha for example, with Allah. If you do that, you are doing shirk. Okay, which is basically if I go and worship a yantra like you have here or a murti, I am equating that with uh, Allah and this is shirk. There is then a whole behavior defined of how do you behave with people who engage in such activity. Let's read uh, chapter 2 verse 257. Allah is the protector of those who believe. So Allah is not a protector of those who do not believe. He is only saying that I will protect if you believe in me. He brings them out of depths of darkness into light. As for those who disbelieve, their friends are the rebels. This is basically rebels means kafirs here. They bring them uh, out from the light into depths of darkness. Which means that I as a kafir try to bring Mormons, Muslims from light, Islam. From darkness to, to light. No, oh, okay. as a kafir I am bringing them from light into darkness if I am asking them to follow or in inspiring them to follow my ways. Those are people of fire. They will remain there forever. So, in eternity of creation, a 70, 80, 90 years of my life, this Allah sits there and the Christian God sits there and judges me on 70, 80, 90 years, 80, 90 years of my life and puts me in hell forever. Matlab eternity. Matlab what kind of a Ridiculous idea of a creator is this. Let me ask you a slightly, and I am drawing a bit of a parallel. Are you able to comf comfortably eat with a fork, knife and spoon? I am okay. You are not perfect. Yeah, I am not as good as the British for example. Ha ha, so. Now what happens is, and this is, I am talking about practical life. I am not, I am not being judgmental here. So what happens is, that, the easy thing for us Indians to experience is go to a 5 star hotel. How comfortable are you eating rice with your hand in a 5 star hotel? Well, I mean, when I say you, I am not talking about you as an individual, I am talking about most of us. Yeah, I mean, I think the environment will not, will pressurize you into using spoon and fork, that's the point. Correct. So that's when you try and eat with hand. If you are struggling to eat with spoon and knife, 
you will feel a bit embarrassed when if you see aage piche log are doing a very clinical job talk about the experience of the person who goes to this dinner in a five star hotel in delhi yeah. who is not very good with fork and knife yeah. and he looks around that everybody is eating with fork and knife and he uh, he becomes uncomfortable because he's in his mind he is very very aware that i'll be judged on this basis what is happening over here uh, so I, as i said i'm not ju- judging i'm analyzing what's happening in my head what is happening in my head and it's not wrong it is what it is but we need just need to recognize it. it's not as if you should be like this or you should be like that but what is happening in my head if i can't eat properly is i start feeling slightly inferior because i suspect that people around me think poorly of me it doesn't matter what the guys actually are thinking but in my own head i start uh thinking poorly of my lack of ability i don't have the confidence to eat with hand i don't have the confidence to mai aise nahi khaunga i am not capable i'll eat with hand so i see where you're going with this why should i be conscious of murti puja so why should i be conscious of ke what are you thinking of me some of our issues of this nature come about because we start looking at ourselves through other people's eyes and we it's not right or wrong i'm it's just an analysis i'm not saying you should do that or should not do that but what happens is that when you in my head reason why i react the way i react is that i don't care what somebody else thinks of me so for example coming just to these verses you will go to heaven you will go to earth मेरे को मतलब ही नहीं है आई डोंट एक्सेप्ट द आइडिया ऑफ हेवन आई डोंट एक्सेप्ट द आइडिया ऑफ हेल आई एग्री विद सम ऑफ व्हाट वेयर यू आर गोइंग विद दिस की ओके व्हाई एम आई सो कॉन्शियस अबाउट मूर्ति पूजा एंड इफ आई एम व्हाई व्हाई जस्ट आई मीन कि यार अच्छा जो तुम्हें सोचना है सोचो मैं इतना कॉन्फिडेंट हूं आई हैव नो सेंस ऑफ इंफीरियोरिटी इन डूइंग मूर्ति पूजा और व्हाटएवर राइट ऑफ कोर्स देयर आर रीजंस फॉर इट वो भी सकता है इंफीरियोरिटी बट इवन इफ इट इज जस्ट एक्सेप्टेड कि है राइट ठीक है जस्ट by my my there is nothing but, but, wrong but now i'll come to the next part of this okay so let me now read quran chapter 4 verse 89 they wish that you should disbelieve as they have disbelieved and thus you become all alike so do not take friends from among them unless they migrate in the way of allah then if they turn away seize them and kill them wherever you find them and do not take from among them a friend or helper now let me respond let me respond so again as i said i don't know i have not read the quran i don't know how to interpret it even now see, see is, you can't keep using this argument to deny whatever no 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 let me explain it's fully horrible things it no, keeps no, saying let me tell for explain fully yeah. aren't we acutely aware of people selectively picking some things and plastering them on us and saying you guys are this so people will selectively think pick things from your scriptures and interpret it in a way and But plaster it them no, wait no, wait no. we are aware we are critical of other people doing selective picking yes. not understanding the context yes. plastering it on my head and telling me this is who you are yes. i do have a problem with that you also have a problem with that on all of us as a nation we have a problem with that sort of selective thing yes. i'll make two points here is that i'm extremely wary of selective stuff that gets picked out because i know that that is exactly what happens to me and what can happen to me can happen to somebody else as well but if you start intruding in a manner that is unacceptable to me so uh, that is where it becomes relevant to me to figure out how i want to react with that particular situation i don't find fault with what you are saying or what i'm just trying to explain that it's not wrong but there is a bigger picture as well which should not be ignored so it's not as if this is wrong and this exists because there has been that sense of intrusion 
they has been the sense of attack and therefore and it has happened for an extended period of time and therefore particularly i i would say i think in north india it is experienced in southern india there is less experience is not as it's not been experienced but southern india is more here say i have heard that this is what happened to so and so right but in north india there is direct experience and therefore the reaction is not unexplainable it is understandable it can be appreciated what i am saying is but there is also more to that picture than just this it's and, not my and, moderation if there is today, more to that picture and, this i have to deal with every day now all i am asking for word, is that the kashi vishwanath was broken sure okay kisi ne toda he was a horrible man who believed in all of these whatever there is a fatwa for it everything right you keep calling the man who broke temples and had fatwas like that you keep justifying that by saying no no he also had fatwas where he gave to mathas you not only say that you gave money to mathas but actually you built temples which is a completely ridiculous falsifying false idea of what aurangzeb did then you make a hero out of him you make an aurangzeb out uh, an alamgir out of him that he is the sword of islam and whatever else you make a ghazi out of him you make him a hero you say babar and aurangzeb are my are my heroes and ram and everybody is on the side it must they must be your hero so once you've occupied my home you've broken my temple you have no disrespect you have no respect for that you do not now when you want to reconcile and move forward as a nation you refuse to hand it back some of these are extremely important places for us so what do we do we keep fighting cajoling in court the government is not with us the state is not with us it's it's extremely frustrating it's been a 500 year battle to get the ram mandir made now kashi vishwanath when you go on this trip they say the court says that dig they will say that are ab to ram mandir ho gaya tha you were supposed to end all of this why don't you just be good human beings who've lived and been born here hand over aram se instead of making heroes out of aurangzeb and continually continuously trying to poke your finger in the hindu's nose so, so let me respond. you know where this comes from this comes from a very supremacist idea of islam of allah which actually that there is only this one god and you know your ideas of you you make you mock everything else there is this whole thing in muslims mind that we will rule the world we will turn india into an islamic nation by hook or by crook this is the whole ideology of allah there is no peace when you when you have people like that when you have ideologies like that why does india keep running into pakistan because the entire army it's not just an invading army but it is driven by an ideology which actually says that we are an army in the service of allah and we are in the service of allah by doing jihad there is a very beautiful term uh, sanjay dikshit mentioned it's called uh, jihad e sabiullah something like that which is jihad in the service of allah we are kafirs india is a kafir nation they are obligated given a a uh, not only an order a commandment to all muslims that you this is the way you have to serve me is by killing the kafir eliminating kafirhood from the planet let me so it's interesting since you mentioned the pakistani army so we see the it's not wrong uh, uh, what you are saying is not inaccurate my question with some of this is that it is not necessarily the full picture it is maybe that i am in unformed it may not be the full picture so let me describe another part of the picture which actually does not fit into this narrative that uh, you are describing as sanjay dikshit describes it is that the pakistani army had no qualms doing what they did with the muslims in bangladesh now 
that please explain to me how does it come from the Quran it does not the truth of our lives is nothing is in complete white or complete black and most of our lives are in the grey uh, so given that it is in the grey I buy one I'll answer the Bangladesh piece but by the uh, way you know why was firstly yes it is Punjabi dominance it is misplaced Punjabi dominance of that we are the blood of whatever and why that comes in because most of Pakistani Punjabis believe and trace their roots into Turks and Correct. Arabs and think of themselves as superior because they are true blue-blooded Muslims. Correct, correct. Okay, whether they are not or no is just completely ridiculous, correct. but they believe that. Absolutely. And they were trying to fix what Niyadzi, General Niyadzi says is that may in um, some very pejorative term for rep for talking to Bangladeshi Muslims ki in ki nasl mein theek kar dunga. Why? Because they wear saris, they look behave like Hindus. He cannot accept this, that this is all kafirhood, this is all shirk. Which if is? it does not fit the Sharia of Quran so and the... So it's great that you say that because the Quran doesn't say that. The Quran doesn't say see, what? See, the Quran doesn't say what Niyazi said. Be, be, remember that those are Muslims to I'm whom he is actually saying all this. No, no. About the Bangladeshis or about people like the Bangladeshis. Remember that the, the Bangladeshis hadith, are Muslims. The Hadith of Muhammad, the Hadith, the Shariat, actually before Muhammad died, he actually said that Islam will be broken into or my Ummah will be broken into 72 or 73 sects. Only one of them will be a true Islam. Basically, this war is endless. First, you eliminate everybody who does shirk, which is Shias, Hazaras, by the Sunni. You mean those poor fellows in Indonesia and China and Bangladesh and in Africa and in any of the Americas and Europe are all idiotic Muslims. Basically, they have become Muslims, but essentially they are non-Muslims. That's what some sects basically... They, they, how, See, the Ahmadiyyas say that we are true Muslims because Muhammad was not the last prophet. You can't argue with them because Allah has given us all of this to convert you, that your whole idea is false. There is, see, basically, firstly, I have a serious problem with endless proselytization. Because I see, like Gandhi did, Gandhi saw that as violence against people. I see it in that light. It's good so, or bad, I so, see it in so, that light. So. That's one. Endless proselytization. Okay, the Sufis did that also. However spiritual you were, we were talking to Professor Kapil Kapoor and he actually acknowledged that most Sufis did that. They were barring a few like Shah Hussain who were basically indigenous Punjabis who were basically writing spiritual poetry. Okay, barring that, they were, they were horrible people. They were actually asking people from outside to come and invade so that Islam can spread. I, I wonder if it is the, the idea is to spread spirituality, make people more spiritual or the idea is to spread Islam's idea of spirituality. It seems to be the latter. So very often this distinction between spirituality and religion I don't fully comprehend. Okay. So like, I will I mean, say basically that, people right. adhyatma. Right? So, so, a very so, beautiful Indian term. So, so I would say Seeker. for want of a better term, let's say that there are very few wars that are fought with or very few things that happen at that kind of scale when war is something gigantic scale even at an individual level there are very few times that we or there are times at an individual level that we do things on account of one single motivation but very often when nations act there are multiple motivations at play um, that is the reality often what we do is when we and which is which is the reason why I say what I say is that when you look at newspaper reports on what happened yesterday, yesterday's history you will find people who are doing genuine reporting of that matter. It's a matter of fact. I have observed it and two other guys have observed it. When I read the report in one newspaper and another newspaper, I find there's a variance between them and my own version of what might have happened. Therefore, there is always a problem with when we have a black and white approach to history. Okay. So, so, so there is, it might be more grayish, 
darker grey, it might be lighter grey. Well, I, I guess that's all I'm saying. Nah. So if it is, it is, you know, and usually therefore, darker, blackish, greyish as a pattern, then there, I have a problem. Therefore, yeah. my, my, the, my approach in this matter is that, yes, there was a point in time where you're absolutely right that in India's history, there was a darker grey. There might have been elements of dark, complete black darker grey and that is what it was. In my experience as of today, and I am talking today, I am not talking about history. In my experience of today, it is not that dark grey. So, right. you are coming back to the point that it is firstly, okay, it is certainly not as dark as it was say 500 years, 300 and 400 years it under Aurangzeb and all of that, absolutely. And I may, if I may add, we have a first Hindu Prime Minister in a thousand years, okay, as, as the top of, as the head of the government, it's not happened. So perhaps, yes, these are brighter times, you may or may not agree with that view, whatever. The problem, however, still exists simply because the, this whole ideology of that I will find heaven, which has hoods and whatever, so it's all sexuality firstly. <laughs> which in itself is not bad. Uh, I mean, I, Sexuality so. is not bad, but it is not in this life. In this life, you must sacrifice whatever you have to, to go to heaven, where you will find some virgins who you can have endless sex with. And this is just, imagine the ridiculousness of reducing human intelligence and agency to such gutter levels. But if somebody is finding happiness, happiness with that, that let them why should you interfere? No, firstly, it is, firstly, I think, I, I, it is not my job to interfere. There is this Christian priest who actually says that Hinduism operates at different levels, which Christianity needs to learn from. What he's saying is that based on the experience of the person, of the of the nature of reality or the nature of God or whatever, he or she operates at that level and Hinduism accepts and embraces that. Right? Wonderful idea. We are willing to act. So, I have a problem with that particular kind of statement because mm -hmm. here is one thing that it, it is saying Hinduism operates at different levels. First of all, in my personal view, there is no monolithic yeah, Hinduism okay, okay, fair enough. I mean, and, that's a and it is a, ha, it's a very individual oriented thing that we do. Nobody needs another religion does not need to learn from anything from the multiple individuals that constitute what is generally been branded as Hinduism. You do what you want to do. So what you see there is a there is a fundamental there, there is a structural difference in the language that we use in the conversation that we use. And which is why you'll find very often I, I push back against some of the things that you might say is because it is framed in a construct that is Christian. So, well, so this far, will get an, uh, become an academic uh, conversation uh, because there is a lack of lack of terminology. For the lack of terminology, I use the word Hinduism or call it Sanatanism okay, okay. or I, call I, it Indic or whatever. Let's interpret therefore what this priest yes. said as slightly differently. Yes. He's saying that let's learn from the Indians the multiple ways in which you can approach and let's incorporate it into Christianity is essentially what is more accepting of people operating at different level and Christianity needs to reform to say, no, there is only one idea of God. That is actually what this person is saying. So, I understand. Which is, which is actually a very Indic idea. So, think of it like this. See, again, so, it, it, is, it is very informative when you look at how Christianity has evolved over the years. Few hundred years back, this person would have been burnt at the stake for heresy. Yes, possibly, yeah. Yeah, surely. So, history evolves in the manner it does. Religions evolve in the manner that they do. They go in cycles. Uh, in our, in the Indian sort of approach, it has been clearly explained to us. And that's the, which is something that I said to you last time is that I don't have a sense of pride of being Hindu. I think it's a huge um, opportunity. It, it is a blessing 
to be able to explore it so i am born in a tradition and a civilization that has looked at this scientifically has given me a logical structured approach no fair enough things. so it is deviating from us but but coming to yeah reason why i said that is our approach actually talks about how they will be ups and how they will be downs in civilization I mean, whether you call it yogas or whatever you might want to however you might want to describe it civilization progresses and those yogas etc are not for the indian geography where our scriptures are global in their nature and beyond the globe are more universal so they extend beyond even the planet that's the manner in which our approach is structured which is why i think that there is this huge opportunity this knowledge is just sitting around as long as we open our eyes and we look for it and we find it and we enjoy it we enjoy what we get out of that knowledge so fair enough but there are people now coming back to the point that there are people who firstly mock this who think you're wrong and it's not about me it's not about me feeling whatever you think okay there were charvakas also in the past who yes. mocked no problem yes. they did not go out with sanctification of their own idea of god and said it is my right i am actually doing the right thing with sanctification from allah or the christian god to kill you now the problem is on the extreme end that i will kill you yes and on the least is that i will treat you like a second grade citizen yes and if and i were to assume right power right. i will treat you like that in the yeah, least and the at the least as a second grade citizen so that is the scope in which we and that's where we have the problem uh, in in horrible space both ends are extremely horrible space for like anybody to live said, like you just said we now have a hindu prime minister we are a i mean people say that with hindu rashtra bana denge we are a hindu nation you 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 turn the you term the you take a rashtra which is a sanskrit term or a hindi term from nation which is an english term essentially we are already a hindu no, nation that's not true we may want to rss may want to call it but there is nothing hindu about this rashtra or this construct of the constitution so, and whatever so, so. it depends on that's why it's again the play of words is that therefore it is what is hindu and what is not hindu my own view is that we already are a nation of which which follows this tradition with the knowledge is so readily available it is not really really available anywhere else knowledge is available it is not codified in how the state is going to be run no. and that's something that i've mentioned in the past that my big problem with the indian state is for reasons i mean i can speculate and i can be critical but for reasons i would say best known to the indian state is that they see no value in bringing to fore some of these great pleasures that indian civilization has every pleasure comes with its darknesses but the i think the pleasures outweigh the darknesses Absolutely. I mean, and 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 we don't have we as of now don't have a state it does not matter if the head of the state thinks one way or the other as a common citizen what is relevant to me is what does the state deliver to me on my table i see i firstly completely and, and agree with that i have no objection but that is the nature of the state that, so and the state actually in incentivizes these abhorrent ideologies to actually attack me on a daily basis attack my ways of life so, even kill treat me like second class citizens actually hindus are discriminated against so, in our own so, so i don't think that they we are discriminated anymore but that's exactly what the constitution does it no, actually the temples are under the government we did it but the mosques and churches will not be what i am saying is i am more focused on the future than on the past is what i am saying so i'm not disagreeing with some okay, of the things wonderful then. that you are saying all i'm saying is there's more to it than just that i am my greater focus is on what in the future sure. and the future the indian state needs to provide opportunity which allow me to explore 
some of these traditions. Those who are not interested need not explore. Wonderful. It is a free country. It's a free world. Which needs to become Indic in its nature rather than secular and socialist and whatever, which are completely non-Indic ideas in some ways. See, when you, when, again, secular has two ways of interpreting the term. Yeah, secular, okay. So, firstly, it can remain plural, which is... Secular is... Atheistic. Rejection, ha, atheistic, atheistic and rejection of any ideas of religion, religion or sp spiritual so, so, traditions so, so, or whatever. So, so. And I think that is where, while the state, as a state, you have got to be equidistant or as close to every. So you want to promote atheism, fine, but allow the other thing to happen as well. Yeah, sure, but that's so, France. So, that's not us. So, okay. but that is what, as I say, what we need to be in the future is that we need to be exploring more of what the Indian... We At the end of the day, I don't know where... I mean, in my view, I will have many lives. I don't know whether next life where I'll end up being. So, at least in this life, whatever I can do, I need to do as much as I can to promote, to, to bring to life something that is... Very uh, been, 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 uh, been overloaded with other stuff. Okay. The opportunity is enormous. I mean, uh, we, to the extent that we spend our energy debating the past, we, the, that, see, uh, we have finite amount of energy. Now, that energy, spend some time understanding the past, but my own approach would be to spend greater amount of that energy in taking off the uh, the covers that have been put that are so heavy actually to take yeah. off uh, but spend a greater amount of energy taking off those well, covers I completely agree. I agree with your idea uh, yes if you you might say that I'm in this complaining mode but it feels unfair you know firstly the state does not and then there are these two proselytizing violent ideologies so of I, I orthodox think... Christianity and Islamist ideologies or Islam if you like whose Constantly invading my space of allowing me to live and let so live and all, let live. They don't have it. Say. All that I would say is, Spend your it's not the time. it's not the full picture. There is more to that picture, but we don't need to debate whether there is more to that picture or not. As long as we are focused on, I mean, bringing bringing greater knowledge, uh, bringing. Some people say that is you are driving India into the dark ages or in the medieval past. Yeah, I and and I would say that the idea over here is not driving back or not. Do you want to improve your life for tomorrow? So you are basically saying don't spend your energies in debating or fighting these battles. Rather spend your energy on bringing the cooler Absolutely. which is bringing the technology of Absolutely. India, of our occult, of our spiritual sciences, technology so of who we were, what we who, knew. Who what we, we, yes. I mean, why re I mean, you feel free to reinvent the wheel if you would like to, but it's not necessary that, and if the knowledge is lost, or how to make the wheel, we do need to reinvent the wheel. And somehow actually act on, spend your energies in changing the nation or the, I yeah, whoever we are, constitutionally perhaps, to be more of who we were. Yeah. So, of be more indicative. So, so.